So today's gonna be a different take on the old slab project. Hey class, Mr. G here. Today we're gonna to be talking about slabs and working from home because while we're still virtual, most of us don't have clay at home. So let's bring in, this thing went from one weird experiment into a pretty cool thing. I'm pretty, di I'm digging this. Now for this project, I was using mat board. Mat board I have in excess uh, in studio at home. I, I got a connection at a framer studio and I get a bunch of their mat board and I've used it to supply other schools around me. But because I've got so much, I'm like, what can we do with this? Let's work on slabs. Why? Because it's the exact same methodology that we would be using in class. Now, for my teacher friends uh, as well, some students, if you guys are into the whole figuring this stuff out on your own, slabs are just rolled out sheets of clay. And you take those sheets of clay and you slice them up into creating the exterior shapes or designs that you're gonna be building out of clay. Case in point, my Buddha Homer Simpson mug. This is a student's work, by the way. Uh, she left it behind because she knew that I loved the Simpsons and I was like, oh, thank you so much. This is fantastic. This is for another project. But what you're doing with the slabs is you, you can use it to make round shapes, you can use it to make boxes, you can use it to make a bunch of different stuff. I love slabs. Reason why I got I got a slab roller back there, it's, it's fantastic, love the thing. But if we're not using clay, you gotta have something else. So using mat board or a really good cardboard also will do the job. So for this project, what I did was, from this mat board, I had I started drawing these diamond patterns along the back side of it. All I did was, let's, I'll be honest with you, I was super lazy. I have a nice fat, I got a nice fat ruler. This big boy. Um, this thing is great. I love this. Is, this is my favorite. This is my best friend ruler. Um, this ruler here, it's about two inches wide and it is a 48 inch length. It's like a broad sword. And all I did was I traced that along the back side of the mat board, cut it up with a mat cutter. If you got a paper cutter, that will also work. However, it will, it'll bend the edge just a little bit to where it's not as crisp a cut, which in retrospect, that wasn't great, but it still does the job what I need to get done. Taking these pieces, now we gotta start formulating in our sketchbook, how are we gonna draw this stuff out? I knew I was gonna create a diamond pattern and I saw a picture on probably Pinterest uh, of this really cool vase design that had these diamonds going around the outside of it in a nice cylindrical form, looked like a double helix thing. But at the same time, it was really nice exterior of a, of a traditional slab made vase. I can recreate that using these diamond patterns I made out of the map board. And then, you know, you start making it and you're like, no, that's, that's not gonna work at all. So that happened. So after I laid out a massive, like, dragon skin worth of sheeting that I built with uh, using the diamond patterns, some masking tape to hold the pieces together. Uh, realized that vase was not gonna happen the way that it was formed. So then I went over to one of my math teachers. I was like, hey, I got this project, what can I do? So talking to him, mulling it around, uh, using the diamonds as a three point section where these things are going into uh, much more of a, so taking those diamond shapes and, and going over the surface area, now we're gonna get math focused for a second here. If I take a diamond pattern like this and I cut it in half directly across the bias here, I'm then gonna be left with two triangle pieces. Now these triangle pieces are two equilateral triangles. Because they're two equilateral triangles, they're gonna equal all the same sides. The bottom now becomes the triangle itself. So using that as a triangular base, to start forming the pieces off of and actually coming up from that, that perspective, that this new base is now what's gonna create that, that structure, that's what created the overall vase design itself. And as I started building it up, I had this nice, like even when it was at this stage of this really cool like bowl looking thing at the bottom part, I was like, that's not bad, let's keep going up. So bringing it up, I wanted to change the vertices. So instead of having all of these pieces going inwards like this, I wanted to have then start creating an exterior. So as it's creating the exterior, you have to modify how the angle is gonna be turned on that diamond pattern. This is so much math that you can get your math teachers involved, you get a science teacher if you're doing physics involved too, because then we're having to talk about balance and weight and how these things are gonna be proportionally changing to one another, and that creates a whole nother project. And it's good because then we get our steam element. We definitely wanna get steam in there more often, trying to get those elements in there, because why? Because art is a fundamental building block for most educational purposes, and even if most people aren't gonna say it or acknowledge it, 
it's a fact. So using structure then to create more pieces coming off of it. I, I, I will be honest with you. I got to the top of this. I was, I was at the point of just, I need to go ahead and call it quits because at the end of, uh, cause when I was working on this project for class, my term was getting close and I need to tell my students to, you know, we got to wrap it up cause stuff's due, you know, grades. So wrapping it up here. Now I will say this up front. One, I love spray paint. I love using spray paint on a bunch of different things, but at the same time, I'm still, a learning artist in that I'm still dealing with the exterior design of the project. Now, looking at this in retrospect, I would think, I think I should have done the Partridge family style, which is all panels out here should have been these like retro 70s kind of colors and each one painted individually. And that would come out probably to a better piece overall. It's just got that kind of feel to me, that Argyle pattern. They kind of need that funky color to them a little bit. That's like my new word all of a sudden, it's funky. I use up all my masking tape building this thing. So just taking a whole nother trip down, creating slabs and just creating some fun, different stuff. Uh, just again, recapping. Once I cut out those pieces out of the mat board, using the masking tape to hold the pieces together. And once I had the pieces held together, coming back with a glue gun to glue in the steams, just to make it a little more structurally sound. You can add more tape and just do the whole thing as tape on the outside and that works just fine. I want to add glue to give it another different layer. Also, I do like the way that glue beads around the different seams. It adds like a sci-fi element to me. I like that. Why? Because I'm nerd stuff. I like that stuff. Geek. I'm a totally geek. Uh, I totally geek out on, on sci-fi stuff. That's just me. Um, but making this stuff is just fun and just gives you another way to make a fun, awesome slab project without having to work with clay just gives you another avenue to work on also don't forget you could probably use this as a good template design if you were going to be making uh, another slab project and just wanted to build one out of paper first so see how it works or see how it works or see what you need to modify change to make that design a little better all right, let's go ahead and wrap up the class here today, guys. As always, I hope that you guys got something fun out of today's lesson. I'm trying to make new slab projects, trying to make something fun, fresh, and uh, and different. Keep it, keep it real, keep it interesting. As always, let's go ahead and take care of our homework, though. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share on all the various platforms. Try to get the message out there to all as many students and teachers as we possibly can, trying to educate the masses. As always, if during class you had a question, comment, concern, raise those hands, comments below. Happy to answer those questions for my classmates. And as always, I'll see you guys. Next class, I got like four more things I gotta work on today. I got a lot of projects. I'll catch you guys later. Later guys.